protecting our personal data has never been more important amid the growing threat of cybercrime and identity theft. Many feel we have lost control over who knows what about us online. The notion of a private life has changed as hundreds of millions connect on social networking sites. But what happens to all that information? Austrian student Max Strems trying to find out. He was surprised when Facebook agreed to send him more than 1,200 pages of data it had about him, even stuff he'd long deleted. He made 22 complaints to the Data Protection Commissioner in Dublin, where Facebook in Europe is based and where an audit was already planned. A lot of very sensitive information was in there. So, for example, there were all my deleted messages in there. And by just searching individual words, you can type in, for example, all the political parties that are existing in Austria. And within a blink of a second, you know what I was voting for or which I'm in favor of. Because, um, of course, I was discussing in private chats with other people about, I don't know, recent pol political developments. But all that is retained for three, four, five years or probably ten years in the end. And that is something that's really new that one individual company holds that much, inf that much information about one individual user. And I do think that a lot of it is not very transparent and communicated to the user in a way that they really understand that. As a result of the investigation carried out in Dublin, Facebook has agreed to a number of changes on its website to meet privacy rules. The company had this to say on the issue. We are a, a service you know, where people uh, come and voluntarily uh, disclose information to the service. They, they post it on the service uh, in full knowledge of what they're doing because we have a very comprehensive data use policy and very clear information actually on the site about you know, what you're going to be sharing and who you're going to be sharing it with. Uh, and we do have facilities. We all, always had facilities for uh, people to be able to remove the data once they no longer wanted it to be on their profile. So... We feel the service was absolutely in compliance with the principles that the European Union Data Protection Framework is, is based on. Uh, but what the Irish have done is come in and suggest areas where we can make that even, even more effective than today. But the case goes on. Both sides are in face-to-face -face talks, with Irish officials under pressure to formally rule on the complaints. Surveys show that more than 70% of Europeans are worried about what happens to their data online. Brussels wants to reform the regulations, sparking widespread debate. The changes would include one set of EU rules, bigger fines for breaches, more informed consent and greater delete options with a so-called right to be forgotten. Users would also have easier access to their data with the right to transfer it from one service provider to another. User groups cautiously welcome the plan. In principle, I would always approve the rules because they're highly necessary. The crucial question, of course, is how will it take shape? And there are also a few smaller problems where it's not yet clear how they could be regulated in detail. But this is something that will be dealt with in the consultation that's planned. Well, some of the changes are long awaited and they're much needed. Um, they fall short in, in some respects because it's still the case that privacy in Europe is based on trust. And it doesn't matter how hard the Commission tries to enforce privacy, while the willingness isn't there from industry and government, we're still going to end up in a surveillance society. But officials in Brussels say national data agencies would have more powers and citizens would expect them to act. And if the laws are not enforced, then the natural ally of European integration, of European law, namely the national judge, comes into play because the national authorities, if they don't act, uh, they can be made to act by citizens who turn to courts and say, here is European law, I want my right, I want this authority to act. Google has also caught up in big controversy over its privacy policies. It wasn't available for an interview, but did give us a statement. We support simplifying privacy rules in Europe to both protect consumers online and stimulate economic growth. 
It is possible to have simple rules that do both. We look forward to debating the proposals. And what about automatic profiling? The collecting of data for targeted advertising, for example. Or profiling used to track down people suspected of breaking the law. Some people say it's only about wrong decisions, uh, that sort of, because it's based on automatically generated profiles, there is the risk, of course, you're taken, mistaken identity, you're taken for a terrorist, uh, arrested, maybe even tortured in extreme cases. Um, but uh, in the Council of Europe, we think it's not only about uh, these uh, extreme cases of discrimination, but it's also really a human right that you have a right to control your data. But one company whose products are used for profiling reckons the technology itself is not the issue. Where I think the European Union should be focused is on making sure that only appropriate decisions are made, not focusing on how those decisions are made, what technology is used. No one is in favor of discrimination, no one is in favor of, of making bad decisions. Whether those are made personally or through the use of a computer shouldn't matter. And so I think the focus on automated profiling is, is misdirected. Some experts believe the greatest threat to privacy in the future is the rapid development of location tracking systems via mobile devices that pinpoint and memorize our exact location. Questions over consent and who can access, share and store the localization data remain unanswered. And experts are looking into whether some kind of private zones can be established. A fundamental problem is trying to understand what mechanisms we can use to make protection of privacy technology easy to use, because we can't imagine users constantly having to reset the privacy settings on their smartphone or iPad every time they use an application. There are so many applications. But to worry about internet privacy does not mean staying in the shadows. Max Schrems, for example, remains logged on to Facebook. The thing is what we wanted to do is improve Facebook and not just um, abandon it somehow. So um, we're kind of having that idea of data protection makes you trust more in the services and therefore you can use them more. And so what was very important to us to have this positive attitude uh, improving the things instead of just um, ignoring them.